we're learning a lot about even the well-differentiated ones. Uh, historically, we've thought of them as being well-behaved and therefore called well-differentiated. And we've thought about the really aggressive ones like small cell lung cancer would be a good example. That would be undifferentiated, poorly differentiated neuroendocrine carcinoma. So in many respects, the uh, vocabulary defines two different biologies. So the grade one neuroendocrine tumors could be benign or malignant. However, the poorly differentiated uh, or undifferentiated uh, implies carcinoma. So that disease is similar to what we know with uh, lung cancer and other carcinomas. So neuroendocrine tumors on the well differentiated, they behave totally different from the carcinomas. And it's not often appreciated what those differences are. And so sometimes neuroendocrine tumors are treated as neuroendocrine carcinomas. And those are some of the real subtleties that we have to understand when we see these patients, not to get them mixed up from the pathology, where it starts, the pathologist will label it, but we have to take that into the clinic and protect the patient from overly aggressive therapy. And at the same time, not forget about those patients who are told they have a benign tumor, where in reality we know that their disease is they're at high risk for relapse and five to 10 years later they may have metastatic disease, yet they're told they were cured with benign disease. So you can sort of see the conundrum that practitioners are in. Do we overtreat? treat neuroendocrine tumors as carcinomas, or do we underfollow? We underfollow the neuroendocrine tumors that are labeled as benign, but really we don't know their biologic behavior, so we end up telling them, go home and have a normal life, when actually they should be under uh, surveillance for recurrence.